Uh, first of all, just uh, our project field. We wanted to provide individuals in wheelchairs or the injured a uh, method of ascending or descending stairs where other method might not be available to them, either because of cost or just um, inaccessibility. And just the history of some other uh, of other uh, wheelchair uh, of other stairlifts that are available on the current market. This one's the Garaventa Super Track. It's a lift that takes the entire wheelchair itself and ascends and descends stairs like, uh, like a sort of mini tank. And then this one is sort of similar to our current design, which is the Express 2 stair lift. Uh, it, it, com it connects to a, a railing next to, the, next to the stairs and ascends and descends similar to the type that we created. And there's also the Ellen elevator and a rail method that, that um, circles up a railing. And this is just a list of what we want to deliver by the end of the project, which is just the technical paper, the prototype, and the poster, which are all due by tomorrow. Since the project just had me and Nazir on it, I took the role of a fabricator, and Nazir was the team lead, taking care of a lot of the analysis and whatnot. And then our principal investigator was Dr. Landberger. This is a list of the schedule as we have it for this uh, spring semester. At first, we just took over a lot of the analysis, and afterwards uh, was testing, making modifications, and then testing those modifications. And currently, we're here in this last week, which is just uh, finishing up our paper and the presentation itself. So the way we went about uh, creating uh, our process chart was first we found a problem, did research on it. We addressed the requirements to go over those problems. And then after we test, we built the what we needed and tested it, we made adjustments and then tested those adjustments to, to see how they would work. And lastly, we would write our report. So we went through this process about six times so far. So after the winter quarter, we went through it about three times. And now uh, we did another three this semester. Next, um, this is just how we made our decision to go with the, the type of motor. We, we knew we needed something uh, that wouldn't be too extensive, so the, a lot of the winch motors were a lot higher in cost, and we found that the screw motors would be more dependable based on a uh, recommendation by Dr. Landsberger. Next, this is what we wanted the prototype to have as a requirement. We knew that the, to that the to have a pretty high torque, and we want the, support, the lift to eventually support over 500 pounds, but currently our lift supports about 180, and it costs about the $700, but to make um, adjustments would, would bring it up to over about 800 if we want it to be stronger. This is just a more material selection of how we went about choosing our wood and the type of metal for the, for the steel for the supports going along the skeleton of the body of the lift. And we decided to go with pine plywood and aluminum. This is just an overview of our cost. The most expensive thing was the motor itself, which was about $300. And then just a lot of nuts, bolts, and uh, the wheels and bearings. Just, and, the, and the railings themselves that we, that we bought this semester, which were two eight foot long steel uh, uh, hollow box rails. This is uh, where our prototype was located, outside in the stairway, um, in front of the lab. It's a short staircase. Not We originally wanted to work on the larger staircase, but we couldn't get approval for it. And these stairs have a 35 degree angle that we have to work with on the poles. This is how our design is kind of right now, which is the, the four <laughs> different hubs located along the back. and and each one at the at that 35 degree angle that we could work with. This is the, the type of uh, box rail that we got and the the wheels that incorporate into this in, incorporate into the box itself. I'll go over some of the analysis of the of the bending of this rail later on. And this is just how we went about building, just uh, cutting and attaching all the parts of the Securing all the parts of the of the lift together. Freaking hammering, <laughs> cutting. <laughs> it's a little slow, but no wonder your file sizes are so big. Yeah. <laughs>
And this was the original prototype that we had before any other adjustments were made. Just a simple uh, skeleton on the bottom. Use some L, L bars right there to just add the extra support. But then this is how it is currently at the end of the semester. We added some of the guide wires over here to give it some more support when, when weight is added. And these are the type of hubs we have. Um, I'll go into more detail about these hubs uh, in the next few slides. Yeah, so those were the original hubs we had. They weren't very stable, um, and they couldn't take a lot, of, a lot of weight load. And they only took weight, basically, along the y-axis. These new hubs take the weight along the y-axis, and there's opposite, opposite skateboard wheels on each side to take care of x-axis in each direction as well. Those were, once again, they, and then those were the secondary hubs we made after the first ones. And they, they took into account the X direction as well, but they didn't take one account into each side. So there was only, so they were only strong, sorry, along one direction right here. So it held, the, held onto the guide bars, but it didn't have a wheel on the opposite side to basically keep it stable in place. So we had more, um, more on shaking as it was going up and down. And this is just, once again, the new type of hubs that we have. Uh, this one would be on the, this one were the ones that are located on the bottom. So this one was, was um, on, the, on the lift itself to prevent bending on that side. And then the top was on the opposite end, so to prevent bending on the other side. Yeah, this is a better example of it. So top prevented the bending to the right and up, and the other one printed bending to the left and down. And this is just an example of the type of beam deflection we got based on the 0.6 thick um, uh, beam that we have. It just based on the on the strength of steel and the the height and length that we have to deal with. So for so in the middle of the in the middle of the bar at about 40 inches. The deflection for 300 pounds would be about uh, 0 0.87, 0 0.817 inches, and uh, we were only able to get about 180 pounds. But this is what we, what we could expect for for 300. But after about the 180 was when the the um, the supports themselves began to slip, so we couldn't get past that 180. But the 0.187 is still too high, so we would need to add more supports. Along the along the railing in order to account for this much. The next, this is just a simulation of the pipe as more weight is added. So uh, you can imagine that for about 300, it would begin to fall down. But we would need to to account for that because uh, after after about one inch is when it would begin to scrape along the staircase, along the stairs. And then this is just a calculation for the tension that occurs in the in the guide wires, uh, based on the lift itself being about uh, 40 inches on the bottom and 30 inches on the back. So, and giving our angle between the wires about 36.9, and applying a 300 pound weight again, uh, we get about 180 pounds of tension. But since each guide wire has a capacity for 150 pounds, it's still below that. Um, Below that, below that amount before they would break. How did you? Uh... Yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to okay. look at that. Okay. And then this is just a simulation of the base bending without the tension wires. So you can see that as weight is added to the front, that front would tilt, and not not here would it break, but rather here it would begin to break. And currently the. The, the lift itself is secured on the railings and moved up and down manually. And it weighs about 46 pounds, and it can support up to 180. Uh, future, we want it to be moved up and down by the motor, but and have the guide wire retract when it reaches the top or bottom of the stairwell and support over 300 pounds. And testing, uh, we secured the lift to the railing to observe how the weight, and then after we saw how it began to shake or where it began to deform after adding that weight, we would uh, make, make improvements to the stability and security of areas. And we also had to adjust the railings themselves in order to, so it wouldn't scrape as it moved up and down the, 
the railings. So future, uh, we want to make modifications to the lift in order to stabilize it more and find spacing for the motor and the chain to, to, to move in between the hubs themselves. And then once we attach the motor, it currently moves too fast. So we need to, to use a, either gear reduction or, another, or, or find a way to adjust it electronically. And this is just a calculation for the motor. Uh, right now, with the, the torque is about 25 pounds at its current diameter of two inches. So we get about 300 uh, foot-pounds of torque as it rotates, which is um, too high and well, just too fast for what we need. We want it to feel more safe as the customer is moving up and down the lift itself. So currently, this, the, it can support about 180 pounds of force, 100 more pounds than our model in the winter. And it's supported on the rails alone. It doesn't grind on the stairs, and the guide, wires uh, the guide wires we added provide a good amount of protection from bending up on the front of the lift. And this is just more. And then, so currently our issues are that the, the that mounting the, the lift itself onto the, the railing is complicated, and since we can't leave it out there overnight or anything, it becomes a little difficult to, to transport. Uh, we need to increase the, the durability and the area for the motor, how we implement the chain and how we install the motor into the concrete on the outside, so it needs to be decided. And it would be better if we had a larger testing area as it's pretty cramped on those stairs, little stairs right now. And improvements we wanted to make in the future are increase the distance between the wheels to distribute the total force. Uh, add reinforcement to the bars and add more um, securements along the bars so that the deflection wouldn't be as much as weight is increased. And we wanted to increase triangles on the back of the lift itself to give it more stability. And 